Good morning, everybody. Today's August 10th. Dr. V here from Las Vegas, New Mexico, the original Las Vegas. Yes, I'm at a gas station because this is where I could get cellular service. And um, I'm here to tell you, uh, COVID update's not looking good. Um, now, yesterday is Monday, so we had 235,000 cases yesterday. Now, I'm not... I realize that a lot of those numbers are because some counties have not, did not report during the weekend, so that's an actual backlog. So that's not a great representation of a one-day total, but we'll see tomorrow, because I, I suspect tomorrow's total will probably be in the 130s to 150s, um, 150,000 cases, so that'll be much more telling. Um, we are just getting started with the surge. I want to be very clear about this. We are not near the end of the surge. This is the beginning of the surge. So this week, last week was Louisiana. This week is Florida, like I've been saying. So Florida, per capita, of the United States averages about 25 COVID cases per capita, right? So out of the 350 million, um, we get 25 cases per capita in the United States. Last week, Louisiana took the lead it was averaging about 80, 85, 90, uh, 95 cases per capita. Uh, today, Florida is averaging 130 cases per capita relative to the United States is 25. And its governor still will not back down for political reasons on this anti-mask mandate. And I don't think he realizes that regardless of what governors decide to do or not do, reasonable people will do what they will do to protect themselves. So this week it's going to be Florida, next week it will be Texas in the news, the following week it's going to be California, LA is already uh, around 3,200 cases a day, Houston where I live is around 2,000 cases a day, um, New York City is 1,500 cases a day, and I will tell you again, I am quite shocked at how quickly it's going up the eastern seaboard. So the, the Carolinas, Virginia, Pennsylvania, you guys are about to light up too. We are in the second week of Sturgis in South Dakota, and you have to remember that uh, it will take a lag time for that um, to take effect. So Sturgis will go um, to this week, um, and so expect the caseloads to increase in the Midwest uh, a month from now due to this the Sturgis and um, and with a major city being like Chicago area so we're in it for a hot mess and I I don't see us going down so this time last year our case loads were going down and then we headed into the fall relatively not low enough but lower and then we had the uptick during the Thanksgiving and then the double double spike over the Christmas holiday travels into New Year's and we remember what happened there well, with the events of school opening, Sturgis bike rally, football season, you know, um, Delta variant, and possibly the Lambda variant, I just don't see us coming back down again like we did last year. Uh, so we might just have a continual surge and then have a huge surge over Thanksgiving uh, and Christmas. Or people could really wake up and instead of like last year where you know, it's my mom, it's my grandma, I'm gonna take my chances, I'm gonna fly. Maybe people will be go, will go, okay. So all of the elderly people who had it last year, they either passed away, unfortunately, from COVID, or, or you know, 80, 90% of them have had their first dose, so they're protected by the vaccine. So maybe people will realize, dude, it is 40 year olds who are getting sick. It's 40 year olds who are in the hospital. It's 28 year olds who are in the ICU. And maybe that might be enough to scare them. I don't know. Or they might say, see, I had it and I felt bad and I recovered. So, and this whole natural immunity thing. Real quick, if you're still watching, I will tell you that if you had COVID last year and you survived, good. I'm happy you survived. But remember, most likely you had the wild type variant for the UK variant, the wild type is, it's called the wild type, that's the original SARS-CoV-2, the, the, the granddaddy of them all. Or you might have gotten it in the spring when it was the UK variant, 
but this Delta variant is completely different. So yes, you might have antibodies. Now this is how, how illogical people are. People go, well, see, if the vaccines are working, the people are getting cases for the vaccine. First of all, it's very few people. The vast majority of people coming down with COVID is unvaccinated. So people in hospitalization, it's about 95% are unvaccinated. So only 5% are in the hospital that are vaccinated. So that they'll say, see, if, if, if vaccinated people can still catch of this, and why do I need to to um, get vaccinated? Well, the Delta variant is very different, and the more variants we get, the less effective our vaccines are going to be. But and that's what that's where boosters come in. That's fine. But my point being is that if you had COVID last year, chances are you had the wild type, and you have um, or the UK variant. Now, if the Delta variant is causing breakthrough cases in vaccinated people, what makes you think your natural immunity from antibodies last year are going to work against a Delta variant that is that is um, evading, um, that's causing disease in 5% in of vaccinated people? How does that work, right? So there's a very good chance your natural antibodies are, are, won't be enough to um, get you through Delta. So, but a, a new paper suggests that if you survive COVID and you get one dose of a vaccine, you actually have better and more antibodies than someone who never had COVID and got both doses. So imagine you got COVID last year and you get two doses of Moderna, for example. Now you can feel pretty good, you're right? Now you can brag. But I don't really get the people who sit there and go, well, I had COVID last year, so I have natural immunity and I survived it. And so I'm not going to get the jab or whatever. But first of all, let's stop calling it shit like that and call it amazing medical science. How about that? How about amazing technology that's saving, that's saving my ass? How about we call it that? But yesterday, 235,000 cases in the United States. And I realize that's probably partially a backlog from the weekend. So we'll see what the numbers are doing tomorrow. But I'm telling you, the more you let cases blow up, the more you're going to have to deal with variants and the less effective our vaccines will be. So I hope you will, will take that number, become very cautious, and see that we understand this. Hear me now. We are at the beginning of this surge. It is not. And I would call this the second surge. I wouldn't call this a, this is the second wave, not the fourth wave or fifth wave, like some people are saying. No, that was all one big wave, what we saw. All those little spikes working its way up to what we had in January and February. That was all one wave, and now we are having the second wave. That's what I say, you know, but who am I? Who knows? See you tomorrow for another update.